What's up, Samonix, and welcome to a really fast quick win. I recently discovered a package for accessing iOS health data with Capacitor, and I want to share with you how that works. So you can find the code for the quick win link below the video for all Ionic Academy members, and you know the deal. If you're not yet an Ionic Academy member, go check it out, ionicacademy.com. Still my place to help you with everything about Ionic. So let's do this. This is the Capacitor Health Kit plugin. And there is actually also a Cordova plugin, and we're gonna talk about this later. So the Cordova plugin has some obvious issues here. Uh, we're gonna talk about that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this Capacitor Health Kit community plugin. So I've already started a blank new Ionic application and I installed the Perf, uh, Perfood Capacitor Health Kit plugin. Additionally, I also added the date FNS library simply because for some queries we need to have a date range and date FNS makes it really, really easy. After that setup, you're gonna run the first build and add the native platform because we're gonna get into the info plist as we need to add some permissions. So we're gonna just copy that block over and then we're gonna go, let's say here and put it in there. Now, what we need to do additionally is open the iOS projects. Actually, you can do this uh, from here. I never knew. You can just right click and open Xcode. Oh, that works perfect. Uh, I should just use Capacitor. Cap open iOS works better. I don't know why uh, Visual Studio Code wasn't able to open that, but well, we got different options to do this. So when you go into your app, you're gonna have to select sign, uh, signing and capabilities. You're gonna have to select your team and you wanna add one capability. So just search for health, add health kit. Uh, right now I don't really need clinical health records or anything like that. Um, Ioning IO starter, yeah, probably I should just come dev dictic health video. Um, yeah, that's not how you spell it, but anyway, that's gonna work. Um, so then it fixes automatically my issues. Oh no, no, it's removed this completely. Devdactic dot uh, health video. Come on, just do it. Okay. Um, most of the stuff can only be tested on a device, and yes, this plugin so far is only for iOS. If you're using the Cordova plugin here, the old from Eddie Verbruggen, um, that's actually gonna work for Android as well, as far as I know. But here, uh, unless somebody created a pull request, uh, added hard drive type with BPM, you know, oh, that's cool, that's a nice pull request. Um, we are gonna check this out. So, uh, let's see, I've brought up Ionic Surf for our application because we're just gonna create a super simple view. So let's go into source, app, uh, home, and by the way, I'm, I'm using um, Angular here, but you could just do the same with React. Uh, the usage of the plugin is pretty much exactly the same, only your view might be a tiny bit different. So this is how we can set up our view. Um, we got just two, three buttons uh, to get our permissions, to load some energy and to load our weight, and then just two items to display the weight or the currently burned calories. Now, this won't work right now because our class needs some functionalities. So let's bring this up and I'm gonna add weight and calories initialized with zero. And then the first function is gonna be async get permissions. So we're gonna have to get some permissions for this from the iOS health app. You've probably seen this dialog which comes up and covers your whole screen and that's what this plugin will trigger. So I'm gonna go ahead with a few read permissions. For example, I wanna read the calories, my steps, the weight, and my activity. And then once you've defined those permissions, you can go ahead with the Capacitor Health Kit plugin and use, you can of course check if it's available. Then we got a few other calls and we wanna first of all request authorization. Um, and we're gonna have to pass in the different permissions. So we can actually have different permissions for all, for read, uh, where we're gonna pass in our read permissions, uh, read permissions, and then for write as well. We don't wanna read and write. I think actually that this plugin uh, query is available, doesn't have an ability yet to track something. So we're gonna talk about development options in the end. So we're just gonna pass in the read options and that's gonna be enough. 
Additionally, I'm going to add two more functions here to load our energy burned and to add our load weight. And this is how our final application should look like in the end. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Ionic Cap Build iOS because that will run my uh, build for the application here, the ng run app build. And it will also sync and copy over all the files to the native project. I am usually a big fan of the capacitor live reload. However, I had a lot of problems with using live reload and health kit integration. So you can give it a try, of course. Um, so just like always with, uh, if you're using live reload, it should look something like this. But if you don't see results, if you don't see the dialogue, uh, if you got problems, I highly recommend you just go ahead and um, create a real build from your app. So with that being said, let's see. Here's my application on a device and I'm going to try the first option to get permissions. Um, yes, and it works. So this is exactly what we want to see. Ionic Health would like to access and update your health data. And these are the categories that you passed in. So calories, uh, is there calories? Is this active energy? I assume uh, steps. Sleep, I don't know why sleep is included. Probably the plugin is doing this. Weight and activity, this is workouts, yeah. Um, so probably my head is covering this, but this is how it looks. And of course, I wanna select all and I'm gonna allow this. And at this point, I can make my other calls to the plugin to actually access the health kit data. So let's bring in the first function and talk about what's going on. If I wanna load my energy, um, Gonna add a few, oops, that was not what I wanted to do. Uh, are we still on zoom four? Uh, are we zoom four? Zoom commander, yes, we're on zoom form. Uh, oh, god damn, I'm hitting the wrong icon. Um, so here's what we do. We create the current date and then we use date FNS to get the start of the day and the end of the day. I haven't found anything that's easier than that because we need that for our query options. We need the start date and the end date. We could also have a limit. And most importantly, we have a sample name. So this basically means what do you want to query from the health application? And you can find this if you check out the iOS documentation uh, for HealthKit you're gonna find a bunch of quantity, quantity type identifier. Uh, so here's the whole list. You can throw through that. Um, this is everything that we got. Now, there is a little problem. Um, for example, if you query the steps, you get raw data back from the health application because you get data back which your iPhone might have tracked and which your Apple Watch has tracked. And usually, there is a command to make a query call. Um, if you check out the official Cordova plugin, uh, does it have something like that? Uh, query, I think that should be query sample type aggregated. Um, so there are different calls here in the Cordova plugin. So this is not what we're using, just making the reference here. Um, and that is not yet implemented here. So we can only query one type and this might lead to some problems if you see different strange values. What I do then is just querying the data using the query options. Uh, we get back interface um, data of this interface. So unit number value, uh, nothing really fancy. And what I did is I just summed up all the values. So we then have calories and I can do pretty much the same for load weight. Um, uh, but in this case, I'm actually using sample names. So they have declared an enum with some sample names here uh, that you can use. But of course, those are not all. Uh, I've shown you them in the uh, iOS documentation. So if you want to see all, check out this. Um, anyway, in that case, we can do the same start and end date, sample name, and query that data. And we should hopefully get the weight of the user. Now, none of this uh, will work in my browser. So I'm gonna have to run Ionic Cap Build iOS. Again, the problems with live reload. For some reason, it didn't really work for me. I haven't tried with the Nexus app yet. Um, that probably could work, but I don't think so. No, I don't think so. So I'm just gonna go and deploy the application to my device again. And then we're gonna check out, not the simulator. I don't think that you're gonna see anything in the simulator. So. Uh, here we are in the app again. Let's see, get energy burned. 
Nice, I'm getting 120 energy burn. That's not a lot. Get my weight? Yes, that's true. Wow, that was really fast. Um, I can't remember that the plucking worked that fast in the past, but these are exactly the values I have in my health application as well. I haven't moved a lot today, yes. Um, so yeah, probably the 120 makes sense. Uh, my weight was tracked this morning. That is correct as well. Now, what I want to say about this is this is a cool, fast and easy way to access some of your health data. And this plugin is just the beginning. Um, yes, you can retrieve these basic information, but once you get into steps, distance, uh, it becomes challenging as the um, functionality to make, um, I think it's either a multiple query HK sample. No, I don't think so. I think it's an aggregate call. So something is not yet implemented as well as tracking your workouts is not implemented. And this is where I want to say, I wanted to add this to the plugin, but I just haven't found the time to do this. But if you're into HealthKit and using this and interested in this, I highly recommend you help the creator of this plugin. You probably fork this. Um, there's also, uh, you could probably do this for uh, Android because we don't have an Android implementation yet. This is only iOS HealthKit. And we could also have functionalities to, let's say, save a workout. And if you don't know how that works, this is why I have this Cordova plugin open all the time. You could, for example, go here to the um, implementation. Yes, this is still Objective C and not Swift, but nonetheless, you should get an idea for how HealthKit works. Um, is there something like track or save workout? Yes, exactly. Here is a save workout functionality using Objective C. Probably we could, uh, I don't know if we can feed that whole function, but probably we could feed that into ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to convert the Objective C code into Swift code. Maybe that would already be enough. And then we would have an epic capacitor plugin, which can not only read HealthKit data, but also write to HealthKit. So give this plugin a try. And if you're interested in the topic, probably you're going to be the one who implements the workout saving and additional uh, aggregation functionality. And I'm going to certainly do another video on that topic uh, if you do so. So please let me know. Otherwise, of course, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was a really fast quick win today. You can find the code link below this video for all Ionic Academy members. And again, if you're not yet a member of the Ionic Academy, but want to learn Ionic in the fastest possible way, go check it out, ionicacademy.com. New courses, new quick wins coming every month. We got a great uh, community if you got any questions. And of course, this is just the place to learn everything Ionic. Of course, also don't forget to subscribe to this channel because there will be more videos in the future and I hope you have a great week. So until next time, happy coding, Simon.